Should you worry about the Fed raising interest rates? Are interest rates important to stocks? This is exactly what we're going to cover in this video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Mariusz Skonieczny. I run Microcap Explosions, a website dedicated for microcap stocks, which are ignored and underfollowed by the investment industry. I also wrote about 10 books on investing, one of which is available for a free download at microcapexplosions.com. So make sure you get yourself a copy. There's a lot of talk right now about the Fed raising interest rates and how you should get out of the market. This is going to create the crash. What should we do about this? Are the levels of interest rates even important? Do they matter for stocks? Should you worry about them? And the answer is it depends. It depends on what you hold in your portfolio. And before I go any further, I want to show you a DCF model or dividend discounted model where I show you how the valuation of a stock changes depending on using a different discount rate, which of course is driven by interest rates. So let's have a look at that first. Let's say you have this discounted cash flow analysis model. And let me go through some of the variables here. The stock price is at $55. Earnings per share are 5.5. So right now, the current PE ratio is 10. The dividend payout ratio is 30%. These are your dividends. The dividend payout ratio is 30% based on those projected earnings. The company is going to grow for the first five years at 12%, second five years at nine. You are using a discounted discount rate of 10, and you think in 10 years, the PE ratio is going to be 15, okay? So based on these numbers, the value of the stock is 104, okay? What happens if Fed raises interest rates by 1%. Instead of uh, using discount rate of uh, 10, let's say you're going to use 11, okay? The value of your stock goes from 104 to 95, huh, about 10%. Not a big deal, okay? Now, let's go back to 10% again. So let's say that you know that the value of the stock is 104, but you were very disciplined and you only paid 55 for it. Okay? So you got a discount to value of about 47%. Okay? So how much do you care if the, the Fed raises interest rates? 1%, and now you have to use a discount rate of 11. And now the value is 95. But what do you care? You don't care because you paid 55 for it. And you're still looking at it. Well, it's now not, not a big deal. I'm still getting a, a, a good deal here, even if the Fed raises interest rates to, to 12% you're still okay, okay? Because, again, you, you're still, you still have some a margin of safety. But you see, this is not how people calculate value. This is not what people do, okay? Let's go back to 10%. What people really do in real life is, even if they use this model, they manipulate the numbers in a way to justify their purchase price. So what they do is they look at what the thing is trading for. And instead of paying 55, they pay 250. Okay? Now they're paying a P ratio of 45. And they don't see a problem with it because they're so excited about everything in the economy that they don't mind paying this much. And then what they do to justify their uh, their decision, instead of using a discount rate of 10, they're going to say, well, we're going to use a discount rate of 5 because the interest rates are low. Okay? 
And then they might say, well, but it's really going to grow a lot faster. So they're going to say, it's going to go 17. It's going to grow, uh, you know, 15 here. And then they're like, oh, look, the value of the stock is 250. I'm, I'm paying, you know, two, uh, 254, right? And I'm paying 250. I'm such a smart investor. No problem. And then what happens is that the Fed says they're going to raise interest rates and then they spook everyone. And then instead of saying, oh, I'm going to pay a discount rate of only what, uh, what the Fed is raising it by, no, they get so panicky that now they're like, oh, we're going to use a discount rate of 10 because we're really conservative. And you know what? Maybe this thing is not going to grow at 17%. Let me be conservative. It's really going to grow, grow at 12. And then the next five years, it's really going to grow at, at 9. And, and now, look at this. The value is only 103. And I'm paying uh, 250. I need to sell because I'm overpaying for it. That's really what's happening. That's how people use these things. They manipulate the numbers in order to justify their decisions. They manipulated the numbers uh, to be able to buy it. And now they're manipulating it so much so that it gives them the decision to sell. Hopefully, what you learned from this analysis is that if you pay attention to the valuations and if you are involved in a business that's not interest rate sensitive. So I'm talking about like if your business on the balance sheet has mortgages, 30 year mortgages, then small change in the interest rates impacts those mortgages. But I'm talking about regular businesses that are not, you know, finance companies or uh, banks or something like that. Tiny changes of interest rates. Yes, they do have an impact on evaluation. If your interest rate is a little bit higher, then your valuation comes in lower. But what you saw is that the change in the valuation is not that big. Okay. It's not that big, especially when you didn't overpay for the stock in the first place, when you were responsible about your investing, when you were investing in a business and you paid attention to the valuation. In other words, you didn't over, you didn't overpay for it. It didn't really impact you that much. That's why my portfolio. And if you hold some of the same names, like let's say Oracle, the changes in interest rates didn't really impact Oracle that much. Oracle stock went down for completely different reasons. People got bored. You know, they get uh, anxious about the drill results, but it really didn't have anything to do with interest rates. However, if you look at some of the other stocks and I suggest you watch my previous video that I did on Meet Kevin, where I analyzed five of his stocks, which completely got destroyed during the sell off. If you hold those kinds of stocks, then yes, interest rates matter. You know why they matter? Because People that were buying them this entire time didn't pay attention to the business that's behind it, didn't pay attention to the valuation. They hugely overpaid for them. And then when the Fed raises interest rates, all of a sudden the liquidity dries up because you need new money coming into these names and that is getting pulled out. Of course, it's going to tank those stocks. Also, when people were didn't even pay attention to what they were paying for these stocks. And now they're starting to pay attention to what they actually have in the portfolio. You know, they sell off and people lose a lot of money, but it, it has more to do with psychology than the actual result of what these companies are worth, because I can't figure out what these companies are worth. Anyway, I wouldn't touch them no matter what the interest rates are at what, whatever they are, it doesn't matter. I'm not interested in those kinds of companies, but that's why I said that the changes in interest rates really have more impact on the kind of portfolio that you have, the kind of investor that you are. If you are, you know, a responsible investor and you pay attention to the valuations and you don't overpay for them, they really don't do that much. You can just relax, 
let the other people panic because they do have very good reasons to panic because they were not responsible, they were reckless and speculative and now they're paying the price for it. And I'm just thinking to myself, did you think that the Fed was never going to raise interest rates? Like, what was going through your head? Like, of course they were going to raise it at some point. And now we are in a situation where they have to raise interest rates. I don't think they can raise it significantly, but they have to raise interest rates because we have price increases. And the way you combat price increases, which everybody calls inflation, it's not really inflation, because inflation is the increase in the money supply. And increase in the money supply can cause prices to increase, but for now, let's just call it inflation. So the Fed has a problem because inflation is getting out of control. And in order for the Fed to fight the inflation or control the inflation to a certain degree, they have to raise interest rates. And also the whole point of lowering the interest rates was to stimulate the economy. And now the job reports are coming out, you know, better than expected. And we can all argue whether they're truly good or not. On the headline level, they are better. More people are coming back to the labor force. So the economy is getting better so that signals to the Fed well if the economy is getting better start raising interest rates because you don't need to stimulate that much and on top of it you combine it with price increases yeah the rates are going to go up and I'm thinking like guys like did you think they were never going to go up did you think that they were going to go below zero I mean come on it's like the interest rates are going to go up and down and next time we have a recession whether it's in two years or two months or whatever, yeah, they're going to stimulate again and the interest rates, they're going to lower interest rates again. As I said in my previous video, the Fed is trapped. I don't think it will ever be able to take those interest rates to a normal level because it's trapped. It has to keep printing money and then the federal government can never get its act together by spending less than what it is bringing. So it's a catch-22. Yeah, so in summary, if you are following the intelligent way of investing. The changes in real estate don't really have that much impact on your portfolio or on the value of your company. Therefore, you're probably sitting okay and you're just uh, seeing other people panic for a good reason. They should be panicking. If I had the kind of portfolio that uh, Meet Kevin suggested to his YouTube followers, yeah, I would be panicking and I would be selling the portfolio. And especially if I was on margin, for sure, it's a very good reason to panic. For us, intelligent investors, we can just ignore and uh, just go on with our day and let the Fed do its thing. So thanks for watching.